Welcome back, everyone. We are going to start here in about one minute. Uh, again, please do not vote yet. Um, we, we still have uh, to go through the rest of the process before we cast those official ballots. So ho hold on for us momentarily and we will get started. Okay, uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with session two. I'm going to turn it over to our chair, uh, Mr. Zane Walden. Thank you, Scott. Uh, at this time, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, if you will, uh, Scott, uh, take attendance. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to go through the same as we did before. Uh, please unmute, let me know that you are here, and then remute your Zoom. Alex Carswell. Here. Bert Thomas. Here. Bob Bemis. And again, Mr. Bemis was not able to join us today. Bradley Montgomery. Here. Thank you. Brandon Walker. Brandon Walker. Present. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Caston. Here. Brian Rado. Here. Chris Gallagher. Here. Thank you. Chris Lavoy. Present. Thank you. Chris Taylor. Here. Thank you. Cindy Bolware. Here. Thank you. Courtney Windemaker. I'm here. Thank you. Danielle LaPointe. Here. Thank you. Detta Brunson. Here. Thank you. Don Birdsall. Here. Thank you. Donnie Tucker. Here. Thank you. Evanita Omensetter. Here. Thank you. Frank Barbieri. Harold Hilliard. Here. Thank you. Holly Pickens. Here. Thank you. Jan Shoup. Jared Oaks. Present. Thank you. Jasmine Trammell. Here. Thank you. Jeff Johnson. Here. Jeff Johnson. Here. Thank you. Jeff Patrick. Uh, you're breaking Here. up a little bit. You're breaking up a little, Mr. Johnson, but I can hear you. Jeff Patton. Here. Thank you. Jermaine Hollis. I'm here. Thank you. Joe Lee Gallegos. Here. John Coppola. Present. Thank you. Keith Dowdell. Here. Thank you. Kelly Arian. Here. Thank you. Kelsey Austin. Here. Thank you. Kenny Buckner. Kenny Buckner. Trying to see where he's at. Oh, okay. Mr. Buckner, can you hear me? I see that you're unmuted. 
Oh, there you are. Okay, I see you. Thank you. Kevin Whalen. Kevin Whalen. Here, present. Thank you. thank you, thank you. Kristen Garcia. Here. Thank you. Kristen Peoples. Here. Thank you. Laura Mudd. Here. Thank you. Lisa Starks. Lisa Starks. Luis Sanchez. Here. Thank you. Marcus Gabriel. Marcus Gabriel. I'm here. Thank you. Matt Morris. Here. Matt Alesnovich. Here. Thank you. Michael Drummond. I'm here. Thank you. Mike Marciano. Here. Thank you, Mike Smith. I see you there, Mike. You're muted. There Here. you are. Thank you. Thank you. Moises Rivera. Present. Thank you. Peter Crespo. Present. Thank you. Richard Labounty. Here. Thank you. Richard Pettis. Here. Thank you. Rick Serency. I'm here. Thank you. Ryan James. Present. Thank you. Ryan Smith. Here. Thank you. Scott Mewson. Here. Thank you. Scott Skeens. I'm here. Scott Skeens. Here. Thank you. Sherry Schuler. I'm here. Thank you. Shirley Owens. Here. Thank you. Steve McHale. Here. Thank you. Teresa Maginello. Here. Thank you. Todd O's. Here. Thank you. Drake Burke. Here. Here. Thank you. And Mr. Walden. President McCann at four. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do have a quorum. Excellent. All right. Um, and we have, and, and just so everyone's aware, we have 56 voting members currently accounted for. 56. Mr. Walden? Yes, at this time, uh, Scott. Um, Will you read the do the second reading of the first proposal, please? Yes, sir. So we are now going to go to proposal one. I will read a summary again, and then um, I will turn it back over to our chair to open the floor for debate. You should see it on your screen there. Proposal one, a proposal related to season limitations, adding an exception to bylaw 8.8.1 to provide flexibility for member schools to decide an alternative period of time to conduct a sports season while concentrating on the safety and well being of its students, coaches, and fans. This would be effective July 1st. Sponsor FHSAA Board of Directors. And just so everyone is aware, there were no amendments. So we will be voting on these as is, just to make everybody aware. So that was proposal one. Mr. Walden. Seeing that there are no pro, uh, amendments to the proposal, at this time we'll open the floor for debate. Please and state your name so that we can uh, unmute you uh, and take turns debating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walden. And also, right before we do that, it's when we do have 57 voting members. We do have um, our final member from the first session. So thank you. We do have 57 voting members uh, and everybody returning from session one. Sorry about that. Um, on to debate. Moses Rivera, just a point of clarification. Okay. Mr. Go Rivera, ahead. go ahead. 
one of the members that spoke, uh, the archdiocese, uh, they said they would be in agreement as long as it could be done by district. I'm assuming the amendment does give the executive director that leeway. It says school, but obviously he can do multiple, he or she could do multiple schools or entire districts. Is that correct based on this or no? Yes, for clarification, yes, a district could approach it as a whole if they would like and make that request as a district, yes. Thank you. Uh, Mike Drummond, Hernando Christian. Go ahead. I just got a question about, uh, it says that if this, uh, the seasons are moved back four weeks statewide, I know that one of the things that came up during the pandemic last year and then uh, was discussed was in the case of a hurricane, like when it, Hurricane Michael hit the panhandle, uh, that wouldn't be considered delaying the whole state four weeks. Uh, would there be a consideration for allowing that, uh, those districts to the north or in the south for that matter, wherever a hurricane would come ashore uh, that can't start the season on time? Would that be included in this or is it not included in this? Uh, we're actually going to turn that Mr. George Tommen uh, from the FHSA, the executive director, is going to address that. Thank you, and, and thank you for that question. I, I believe that the intent is for a general statewide uh, ex, a change or a statewide issue. We have a history of making amendments and amending schedules and changing things for individual schools or school districts or separate portions of the state when we have things like hurricanes. So I think we would, uh, this would specifically speak to statewide things similar to what we had last year. This is Brandon Walker from Boca Raton High School. Um, if this amendment is passed, does that mean that the, the FHSA wouldn't consider um, moving the calendar back if we did have another statewide incident? I mean, would this be the state calendar set in stone? And if it delays four weeks, then uh, these would be the options that the schools would have? Well, this would be if the, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Mr. Tomlin, but this would be if, we, if it, the decision is made to push back four weeks for the state, the start time, similar to what happened this year with COVID, it would give the schools the option of still starting with, with the original start date, if they so chose, or after the new start date. It would give that flexibility to request that with the executive director. So you could have flexibility on either end of the new start date, either using the old start date or a new start date that the school or district uh, felt was necessary. Is there any further debate? Kelsey Austin, Countryside Christian. I, I just want to make sure, just using volleyball as the example and what we're referring to here, uh, volleyball was, I think, pushed back two weeks. So if I'm understanding this correctly, what it's saying is, is that uh, those schools, had this been in effect at that time, those schools could have uh, elected to still start on time, some schools, but they would have had a, also elected to not participate in state series, um, or they had the option to wait two weeks and start um, as Florida High School and move the date back and then still be involved in state series. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, that is correct. Do we have any further debate? One more clarifying question, Evanita Omen Sutter. Um, so this amendment, this proposal also says that let's say um, a school district isn't able to start 
at the proposed amended dates that they still cannot extend their season. Is that correct? Beyond the playoff dates. Yes, we. Okay, I'm going to ask if, if Mr. Harrison, I'm going to, I'm going to explain it as well. Um, but I would ask if Mr. Harrison is available from the FHSAA to answer this question as well, just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, the way the amendment, uh, and, and I was just speaking to Ms. Stark about it. If you decide if the new date does not fit and you decide to wait two or three weeks, then you would have that long at the conclusion of the season to finish. And Mr. Harrison, if you would like to elaborate or clarify, if you heard that question, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Harrison. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate everyone being here. So what, what is written in front of you is essentially if there is a four week delay, the school could choose a four week or more delay the school would then choose to opt into the, the original season. So they could do the original start date, but also have to end at the original stop date as well. So it would not extend their actual season, even if it did for the state, it would keep that school or those schools at that same date period, the original date period. Does that help out Scott? Yes, and what about if a school starts after the new date? So let's say it's delayed four weeks and they don't start for three weeks after that. They say we need seven weeks to get started. When does that school have to finish their season? I believe that's what Ms. Omensetter was asking. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Well, it would go to if that school does not apply for this, then whatever the actual the, the season dates are for that sport, then the school would fall underneath that umbrella. So it doesn't matter what the end date still would be at the playoffs. They couldn't extend it. So we're shortening somebody's season because they can't get started on time. I, to, Mr. Harrison, I'm going to highlight B under 88122. I believe this may help address. Yes, I, like, again, I'm not sure if I'm exactly under, understanding the question, but, but the bylaw that's being presented is saying that if, if, a, if the season is delayed using uh, this past year as an example, if the season is delayed from July the 27th to August the, the 24th, uh, school A could have applied and said, hey, we, we want to start on uh, July the 27th then if this bylaw would have been in place, school A could have competed during that time, during the original date of that sport. It, it, it really does not address the schools that do not start after that fact. This just allows the member school to apply to start on the original date if there's a four week delay or more. It really doesn't address those schools who start late. Right, so we're still shortening those seasons because they still have to complete their season by the playoff dates. And so if we don't start, let's say until mid-October and playoffs is in December, those kids only have like six weeks or so, right? Instead of like a 10 week, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, so the way it's written is that no season can go beyond the FHSAA playoffs. Correct, I, but I think I think what you're asking is maybe a different is a different thing all like together. If, if I'm understanding that correctly, you're I think uh, you're looking at like what happens if a school cannot start on time? Do do you prolong the season? And that's something that's that's a different thing than what this is being presented. Okay, thank We're you. We are going to work on getting the sponsor, Mr. Finlayson, on as well. Um, so if you guys could bear with us for a moment, we just want to make sure uh, these are great questions and great debate. We want to make sure that we uh, answer your questions fully.
time is the weekend? So we're still waiting on uh, Mr. Finlayson. Yes, yeah, so I do have, I just, we just got off the phone with Mr. Finlayson. Um, we do have a clarification. So, uh, and Mr. Harrison can jump in as well. Um, if, if a school decides that they cannot start under the newly established calendar during the actual season when the state series is going to take place, you can wait till after the state series. And at that point, if you start, then you could get in a full season. If you start at any point during the established season, you would have to abide by when the season end dates happen. So if it's, if you're waiting to start seven, eight, nine weeks in, um, at that point, you would have the option of potentially starting after and you could play let's just hypothetically football in the spring um, and you could play 11 games at that point. But if you jump in during the actual season, you're going to still be held to the same calendar and end date. Does that make sense? Do we have any further debate? Seeing none, um, then we need to move to uh, voting. Casting our ballots on Proposal 1. At this time, cast your ballots for Proposal 1. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Yes, we will call this to question, and you please pull up that email, Proposal 1. Is anybody, everybody able to get to that ballot? I will start a one minute timer here in a second and we will, at the end of that one minute, we will close voting. Please speak. I'm having trouble getting to the ballot. I am too. Yeah, it won't, won't come up. Is it, is it uh, having to do with being able to click on it? Can you try to copy and paste it into your browser, the link? Yeah, when I click on it, nothing happens. That, that's where I'm at. Try to copy and paste it if you can, or right click, right click, and then click open. Or control click. Hey, Scott. Or con have, control. Scott, you may have yeah. to control click. Hold yeah, down. That works. Hold down control and click it. Sorry about that. I should have given that instruction. Hold down the control button and then click at the same time. It should open. Okay, you now have one minute, one minute to finish voting. Forty-five seconds left to vote. Forty-five seconds left to cast your ballot for proposal one. Only proposal one. It does require two thirds to pass. Just so Scott, Scott yes. Richard Pettis from the villages. I've got my name typed in there, but it will not go to the next. Um, are you getting any sort of an error message or anything, or is it just not? Maybe it's taking it some no. second to think. No, sir. It's got my first and last name. It just I hit the next box and it won't go. Okay, hold on one moment. Try to get it figured out for you. Are you on a desktop, a mobile device, an iPad? What what kind of device are you on? I, um, laptop.
can you click on it and then click enter on the, if you click on the box and then try to hit enter on your computer to see if it'll take you to the next screen. Uh, I've done both. Scott, remember I you I had to use my phone because I was on my laptop. I don't know if that'll help. It try yeah, that could be the case. Try to refresh it, Mr. Pettis. Try to refresh your screen and see if that helps. Hello? We do have fifty we do have fifty five of the fifty seven votes in. Okay, Mr. Pettis, we'll try to get it figured out for the next one. We do have we do have 56 of the 57 votes that are in. We are now going to close the voting for this one, and we are now going to show the results. So proposal one passes with 45 to 11, 80 percent of the votes. Again, it does take 67% to pass. So this does meet the threshold. Proposal number one has passed. Mr. Walden. Thank you, Scott. Um, at this time, will you read the proposal number two, the second reading of proposal number two? Yes, sir. We're gonna get that put up on the screen here. It takes us a second. This doesn't move as quick as we want sometimes. Just these, these uh, technology, there, sorry, all over it. Thank you, Nadia. Proposal two, a proposal related to the use of registered. Yep, you got the wrong thing up still. Yep, yep, we're working on getting number two up there. We're working on it, thank you. A proposal related to the use of registered officials, amending bylaw 8.9.1 at track and field, providing an effective date. That effective date is July 1st, 2021. And the sponsor is the Officials Advisory Committee. Mr. Walden. It's my understanding that there were no proposed amendments to this proposal. That is correct. Seeing none, we will open the floor for debate at this time. Please speak. If you'd like to be recognized, please state your name and Mr. Walden will call on you uh, to speak. Moses Rivera, Mary Santa. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera. I know this was clarified that the purpose of the amendment is that if uh, officials were to be used in track and field, they needed to be registered. But all the supporting documentation seems to indicate that the purpose of the proposal is to have registered officials at each meet. Uh, so again, I wanted to clarify before we vote, this is just saying that if you decided to have a re an official at your event, whether it be a duel or anything above, <laughs> it would have to be registered with the FHS FHSAA. It would not uh, make it mandatory to do that, correct? Mr. Thompson, did you want to answer that question? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Rivera, that is correct. Uh, this proposal only says that if the school, the host school chooses to hire officials to work the meet, that they must be FHSAA registered. I'm sorry, so the supporting documentation really wasn't necessary for this. Am I going to ignore that? Yes, sir. Uh, I would direct you to the text 
Uh, it's very specific. It just says that uh, in those sports that the officials must be registered with FHSA. Thank you. Do we have any other debate? I have a question. Would this uh, also abide by the, the timers and the timing system, people that do that? Would they have to be registered now? Can you please state your name for the record, please? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kevin Whalen. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, this, uh, this bylaw is irrespective of timers. They are considered third-party contractors. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, it's Mike Smith in Wakala. So I, I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. My coach was, uh, we talked about it. So the coaches, if we have a quad meet, the coaches can officiate. They can decide to do that. But you're saying if they decide to get an official, they just have to be registered. That's correct. Yes, sir. That is correct. Thank you. Hi, this is Holly Pickens. Um, so that that means that they you're not required to have a registered official. Uh, it doesn't require the use of officials in any meet of any size uh, during the regular season. It just says that if you choose to hire an official, they must be FHSA registered. This is Brandon Walker from Boca Raton. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, was this proposal vetted through the track advisory committee? Um, what is their stance on, on this proposal? Yes, sir. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, this proposal was vetted by the track and field advisory committee. Uh, they are in support of the proposal. Uh, they did have some ideas about uh, the threshold for where uh, schools should hire officials. Uh, but on the point of, of this, where they should be registered or required to be registered, they're in favor because they prefer that the officials are uh, uh, know the rules, specifically the NFHS rules, which we're governed by, and the Florida modifications. Do we have any other debate? Since we have no further debate at this time, will you cast your ballot for proposal number two? You vote proposal number two at this time. Thank you. Mr. Pettis, are you able to vote for this one? You do have, we, I have started a one minute timer. You do have one minute to cast your ballot. Mr. Pettis, are you having the same issue? No, sir, Mr. Jamison, I'm on my cell phone now, so I just voted. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pickens, for that advice. Thirty seconds remaining to vote. 30 seconds. Looks like we're still missing 10 ballots.
Okay, voting is now closed. We will share the results for proposal number two. Proposal number two has passed with 75% of the vote, 42 to 14. We're gonna refresh one more time to see if that last vote came in. It did, so it has changed to 42 to 15. It still meets the threshold of 67% at 73.7%. Proposal number two has passed. Mr. Walden? Let me again right now, so I don't know. I've got two, three more votes to do. So hopefully it... Okay, at this time, uh, Scott, will you read uh, the second reading of proposal number three? Yes, sir. Proposal three, a proposal related to the participation of non-FHSAA member private school students amending bylaw 9.2.2.4 to allow for non-member private school students to participate for a member private school. This would be effective immediately. The sponsor is George Tommen and the FHSAA Board of Directors. As there are no uh, proposed amendments to this proposal, uh, we'll now open the floor for debate at this time for proposal three. This is Rich Labani at Pensacola Catholic High School. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why any private school would, would allow a student from another private school to come over and play. I mean, it was mentioned that, uh, you know, they probably have, we, we at Catholic High School probably have students that come here because of the smallness of our school to have an opportunity to play. And we're gonna be loyal to our own students. And uh, we've always done that, that, you know, the whole time that I've been athletic director, which has been over 30 years, we, we, we would never let another private school student or, or a homeschool student, you know, participate in, a, in our athletic program because we are going to be loyal to our students. Does, does that mean that uh, we have to accept these students if they ask to come over or can we still tell them that they can't play for Catholic high school? That would be a school related decision. You do not have to accept them. No, sir. Okay. And they, they do have an option to play in the public school district that they live in. Correct. Uh, they have uh, the option of public school uh, of their districted public school, the school they could get into through controlled open enrollment or at a charter school. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, this is Jared Oaks with the Department of Education. I just like to say that I, I think that this is a very good proposal. Um, I'm always in favor of giving everybody in the process a choice, whether it's the actual private schools, the parents and the students. Um, you know, student athletics is short enough opportunity for most students. So I think that we should always be looking for ways to increase the availability of giving them at least a chance to play. Thank you. Well, they do have a chance to play, just not at, at, at another private school. Craig Burt, um, what, what about students that attend these alternative schools or stuff like that? Would they now be also allowed? Would, would that apply to them as well? being able to attend, being able to participate in private schools, or would they have to still go back to their, to their public, to play in public schools? No, sir, this, this bylaw proposal strictly uh, addresses non-member private school students and no other students. Okay. Do we have any further debate on proposal three? Okay. 
As there's no further debate and there are no amendments to this proposal at this time, will you please uh, cast your ballots for proposal three? Thank you. You now have one minute to cast your ballot. One minute. have 20 seconds to cast your ballot, 20 seconds remaining. Okay. Uh, the time is up to cast the ballots. We will now post the results. Can you refresh it one more time too, please, Nadia? Final results are 15 yes, 41 no. This proposal has failed. So bylaw proposal three has failed only received 27% yes. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome, uh, thank you. At this time, will you uh, do the second reading for proposal four? Yes, sir, we'll get it up here on the screen for you and then I will, there we go. Proposal four, a proposal related to high school age limit, amending bylaw 9.6.1 to reflect July 1 as the age cutoff date and providing an effective date of July 1st, 2021. The sponsor is Russ Rogers from the Vanguard School and co-sponsored by the FHSAA Board of Directors. And there were no amendments to this one either, sir. Thank you. Seeing no uh, proposed amendments, I uh, will open the floor for debate at this time. Sherry Schuler. I have a question, just want to clarify that basically we have to pick number four or number five because they can't both be approved. Yes, that is correct, Sherry. Thank you um, for bringing that up again. Really appreciate that. Yes, if you are in favor of moving the age date, you would need to vote for one of the two. If you obviously, if you were against it, then you would vote no on both. But yes, you should only be voting one yes on one. Thank you. Do we have any further debate at this time? Kelsey Austin, uh, Countryside. Hey, just to clarify, this does not affect the four years of eligibility that, that is still in play. This is just if the student has not used up their four years um, and they still fall under the age, then they can participate. 
Yes, sir. This is strictly related to age. Um, the limit of eligibility is a separate bylaw, and this would not affect that bylaw at all. Do we have any further debate at this time? Seeing no further debates and no amendments, uh, if you would at this time cast your ballot uh, on proposal four at this time. Scott, for some reason I can't get in no more. Who is this? This is it's not letting you click on the link. When I do control enter, it won't even let me get on it no more. Can you try to copy and paste it into your browser if possible? Can you try to copy that line, that, that web address, paste it in and hit enter? See if that works. Mr. Dowdell, were you able to get it? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, you have 30 seconds remaining to vote. Okay, voting is now closed. Voting is now closed. We will now show the results. Okay, the results are on the screen for proposal four. This one has passed. This one has passed with exactly two thirds of the vote. Exactly two thirds of the vote. Proposal number four has passed 38 to 19. And please keep in mind uh, that we do have a bylaw on the same, this, we have a proposal on the same bylaw next and only one of these um, can go into effect. But this one has passed with exactly two thirds of the ballots. Mr. Walden. Thank you, Scott. Um, at this time, will you do the second uh, reading of proposal, amend, uh, amendment proposal uh, five. 
Uh, yes, sir. A proposal related to high school age limit amending bylaw 9.6.1 to reflect August 1st as the cutoff date. Effective July 1st, 2021. Sponsor Russ Rogers, the Vanguard School. And there were no amendments to this one either, sir. <laughs> Okay, the floor is now open for debate. Do we have any further discussion at this time? Seeing none, we will now cast our ballot for proposal five. You now have one minute, one minute remaining to cast your ballot for proposal number five. One minute. Thirty seconds remaining. Thirty seconds. Okay, voting has now closed for proposal five and the results proposal five has failed to pass 10 to 46 and we have had a vote that has been coming in uh, there could be some internet issues so we may have the 57th vote it voting is closed so anything that comes in would have already been submitted on time um, it's just obviously with technology sometimes it takes a few seconds but regardless of that last vote proposal five has failed Seeing no further business on the agenda at this time, uh, do we have any closing comments by the executive director? Yes, sir. He is coming over right now with some closing comments. Thank you very much, uh, members of the Representative Assembly, for your uh, your work today. Uh, outstanding work by our chairman of the group. Let's give him some kind of a high five or something here, a good clap here for the for the gentleman that, that led us today. Uh, we appreciate your participation today. Um, we're very thankful for what you do. Uh, always, we want to be elbow to elbow, shaking hands this time next year, and I certainly hope that we can do that. So back to you. Uh, Chairman of the group and also to Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
thank you, uh, Mr. Executive Director. Uh, Scott, do you have any uh, comments or house cleaning uh, issues at this time? Uh, other than just to thank everybody uh, for taking the time today. Um, and also, I know with all those practice sessions that we did and all the emails, you're, you're probably going to block my email address at some point. I sent you so many. Uh, but no, seriously, thank you. Thank you all so much uh, for everything you did. Obviously, this is one of the most important things uh, that the FHSAA does. Uh, all of it's important, but this is one of the most important. This, this sets the bylaws. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, it seems like all of you were very versed uh, on these and, and came with great questions, great comments, great debate. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to Mr. Tommen, uh, to Nadia and Jordan here as well, and Craig and everybody else, uh, Justin, Ed, that commented here from the FHSAA. Um, if any delegates have any comments at this time, if anybody has any closing comments, we'll open it up here for a few seconds. So... Yes, correct. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Jordan reminded me that all everything that passed today, the three bylaw proposals that passed will go into effect July 1, 2021. There are none that will go into effect immediately. So, so nothing pressing, but they will take effect July 1, 2021, all three that passed. And if we have any comments from the delegates, please speak now. Mr. Chair, I believe we may, may be uh, set for adjournment. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Representative Assembly. Thank you, Scott, Executive Director. Appreciate everybody's patience today. Having no further business at this time, by uh, general consent, we adjourn this meeting. Thank you.